Hi, in this video we are going to see how to do a split tone sepia selenium of a silver gelatin print. Split tone in an image means that the highlights and the shadows have two different colors. In this case the highlights have the characteristic brown color of a sepia toning while the shadows are a deep black typical of a selenium toning. Let's see how this is done. First having an overview of the process and then looking step by step at the three chemical baths that allows to go from a complete silver image to a split tone sepia selenium. I made this chart to explain the procedure of a sepia selenium split toning. It starts with a traditional silver gelatin print. Let's take for example the picture of a tree. Since we are discussing about the split toning, let's do a separate discussion for the highlights and the shadows of the print. In the starting image, both highlight and shadows are silver. The first step in a sepia selenium split toning is the sepia bleach, which is typically done by a ferricyanide bleach, also called ferry. Under the arrow, I wrote the chemical formula of the bleach for those interested, while the actual concentrations of all reagents are written down in the description. So if you want to reproduce what I did, you can do it exactly the same. Anyway, this first bleach bath acts first in the highlights, transforming them from black silver to pale yellow silver bromide. The image will therefore appear much lighter. If the image is bleached for a short amount of time, about a minute or so depending on the strength of the bleach, the shadows do not react and remain black silver. The second step is the sepia toner. In this case I'm using an odorless sepia toner made with thiurea and potassium hydroxide. The sepia toner converts the silver bromide in the highlights to brown silver sulfide, the typical sepia brown. Since the toner reacts only with the bleached highlights, the shadows still remain made of silver, so pure black. In this case, already a split tone is obtained with brown highlights made of silver sulfide and black shadows made of silver. The final step is to tone the shadows with a selenium toner. I use the Ilford toner, which is mostly made of potassium selenite in ammonium chloride, even if the exact formula is proprietary. The selenium toner reacts with the untoned shadows, converting the silver to silver selenite which gives more depth to the shadows, adds a dark brown purple tint and gives complete archival protection to the image. Ok, so now let's go step by step and see how this is done in the darkroom. First I selected the image that I wanted to split tone. In this case this is an oak tree that I photographed in Florida in Mayaka State Park and I made uh, several prints of the image, all of them are very similar but I labeled them on the back just to have a reference in case I wanted to experiment with the split toning. So the first step is to prepare the bleach solution. This is done by adding uh, potassium ferricyanide and potassium bromide to a beaker and then adding the required amount of water, in this case uh, half liter and stirring for a while until everything is dissolved. This stock solution is quite concentrated, it will last several months and it can be diluted as needed. And in fact here I am diluting the ferry bleach solution to about 15% uh, strength. The dilution is required to slow down the action of the bleach so that it can be controlled to bleach out only the highlights and not the complete picture. Before bleaching the images are pre-soaked in ambient temperature water for a little bit. At this point we are ready for the bleaching procedure. Uh, the image is transferred uh, from the wash to the bleach bath and it's just uh, shaken around a little bit and you can see how the highlights really start to lighten up and eventually all the image is going to bleach 
and the degree of bleaching of the highlights depend on how much the image is kept in the bath and how strong the bath is. Then the image is transferred to a plastic sheet, in this case it's a polycarbonate plate, and the image is uh, washed and you can also see how it compares a different degree of bleaching just by changing the time in this case. As before for the bleach pad, uh, we need to prepare a stock solution of the sepia toner, in this case a thiurea odorless toner. The stock solution is simply 100 grams of thiurea in one liter of water, and this can be kept for several months and then diluted as needed. The sepia bath also requires a second stock solution, which is potassium hydroxide, the ratio between these two stock solutions, thiurea and potassium hydroxide, will determine the color of the sepia tone, from warm yellow brown to a colder, deeper brown. I will do a separate video on how to change the color of a sepia tone. And for this particular example, I went for a deeper brown that could match the feeling of this old oak tree that it's in the image. To achieve this color, I mixed 20 milliliter of the thiourea solution and 80 milliliter of the potassium hydroxide in one liter of water. Since this solution is very dilute, it's discarded right after use. At this point, the sepia toner is ready and the image is inserted and it takes the sepia color in a few seconds and it doesn't really matter how long it stays in this bath I usually keep it for about uh, one minute longer can uh, stay in the image the prints are then completely washed about one hour for fiber-based prints or about five minutes for resin coated paper most of the toning job is now done this is a pretty deep sepia tone that goes deep into the mid-tones and you can also see how the tone image looks a little bit lighter which is a consequence of the bleach bath and the change of color. The last step is the selenium toner. On the left again we have a water pre-soak and on the right the selenium toner which is a dilution 1 to 10 of the Harman Ilford selenium toner. After the pre-soak, the images are toned for about uh, 2 or 3 minutes. This short toning time deepens the shadows, increasing the D-max of the image and gives a brilliancy to the highlights, at the same time giving a higher archival uh, property to the image. Longer toning time can give uh, more of a purple-brown color to the image, which I didn't want in this case, so I stopped the toning after two minutes. As usual, the prints are fully washed before being hung up to dry. The slightly toxic selenium toner is completely recovered and all the surfaces thoroughly cleaned. The prints are hung back to back to minimize curling and left to dry overnight. Let's now take a look at what I collected the next day. The difference between the untoned and the sepia toned image is immediately apparent. The image is brown and the green cast typical of the pure silver untoned image is gone. The contribution of the selenium toner is not immediately apparent, but there is, if you look, for example, at the roots of the tree, a deepening of the shadows. And obviously the archival permanence is uh, highly, highly enhanced. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. And I'll see you next time with another toning uh, experience or toning tutorial. Thank you for watching.